Talking with people with music in their genes, their blood, and in their soul. You are watching Musical Interlude. Hey, and welcome to another Musical Interlude. I am your host, Casey Bell, and hard rocker Davey Williamson is our musical guest on today. Let's get the show started. So my first question for you is, I read a little bit of your bio can you give us a journey, I guess, of your life into your music as far as your, your you said your struggle? Sure. I mean, as a person who I think with a lot of artists anywhere um, have their own battles and, and things that uh, with any human being, uh, struggles that happen throughout life and, and things that change who we are um, as a person, as we grow. And with me, um, I came from a background that was a little bit difficult, uh, broken homes, broken relationships, uh, witnessing things that most children probably shouldn't. And I think that my, uh, my, uh, my way to, re to uh, relieve myself from, uh, those questions in my head of, you know, who am I and, and what I am to become and, and, you know, what am I a part of and, and where am I planning on being all come from uh, those struggles, like a lot of people. And um, I find that through music, I'm able to, to heal that. And I think that with a lot of people to be able to connect with that means means a lot, and uh, and and hopefully, will help guide them with knowing that someone's there to understand it uh, alongside of them. When did you, when did music find you, so to speak? At what point did you realize? When did you start using your music abilities? So my father was a musician. Uh, as long as I remember. And he played in some prominent bands and had done had some success with it. So it started with him um, early on. I, I first picked up music when I was about 13 years old, or really began the journey of of uh, delving into wanting to be a musician. Um, about by the time I was 16, I had really dug into it. I started as a, a pseudo guitarist, but mainly I was a drummer. Um, my brother, uh, Stevie Williamson, is a phenomenal musician and uh, also a buddy of mine, Cutler Desjolais. Uh We lived next door neighbors and thankfully uh, today, it ended up being beneficial to me because of having the ability to uh, to express myself the way that I need to, to survive everyday life. Um, but started around 16 professionally, um, was our first record that was produced. And when I mean record, I mean the actual vinyl <laughs> was pressed. So it was a real thing. Back then it was cool to do it. And, uh, and we had, we had a great time doing it, and but I but I just continued to learn new instruments and new instruments and new instruments, which is what led me to where I'm at today. And uh, uh, my uncle, uh, a man by the name of Bill, uh, incredible musician. It just as I continued to be inspired by people who were so talented, um, I began to become a bigger music fan. And by becoming a visit a, a bigger music fan, I began began to appreciate the intricacies of what everybody was doing and what each piece of the music brought the song to life. And uh, for me, that's how it all started and, and, and began my, my journey of searching out someone else that understood me or, or had the words spoken through song or uh, emotion through music to provide a feeling of comfort. And that's what I'm trying to provide for, for uh, people as well. So how did you, or who did you learn from to your, the band you're in to go into a studio and cut an album? How did you know how to do that? 
that's a great question. I honestly don't know the answer to it. I, again, through the pursuit of happiness or trying to find that, um, I just continued to pursue what was going to make me feel like um, I wanted to feel, which was uh, good, you know, uh, through, through a, a tumultuous past and, and things that had happened uh, when I was younger and things that uh, have played out throughout my life and, and ways to cope with those. So I, I guess it acted as a coping mechanism more than anything else. And, uh, and uh, it's one of those questions where I, I honestly don't know the answer to. I, 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 I just was persistent. And I think that a lot of musicians and a lot of people are, and a lot of the people that I grew up around uh, their persistence is what paid off. And, and by being persistent, I continued to learn. And as I continued to learn, I found that I needed to learn how to record and produce and play the drums and play the guitar and play the bass and, and continue to grow as a musician and, and grow as a person as well. Awesome. So I think I read it correctly that this year was your, you worked on your first solo album. It is. So it's, it's this year. So out of all the years that I've been a musician, um, back to, again, you know, starting early ages, I, uh, the, the band thing never worked out. It just always, there was some issue or some problem at some point, uh, whether it be a, a musician that could no longer tour, or whether it be a musician who was no longer interested or, um, in the music business, fun, funny, but you know, there's not a whole lot of money in it. So, you know, some people had to change their direction financially. And, um, and for me, I just continued to pursue and move forward and, um, do the best I could. And, um, um, I, uh, I just continued to work. I still work, uh, nonstop. I've got, uh, three businesses that I right now run and um, do it full time as, as well as the music business. So four total, if you want to call the music business a full time job, which it absolutely is. And every musician will tell you the same. So did you, I just want to know, because a lot of people consider this year a trash year, but I realized for myself, it wasn't. Um, so what did how did you decide that you weren't going to not release this album, that you were still going to indeed work on this album in spite of what was going on? Phenomenal question. Um, so I'm glad to hear that you're doing well uh, and, and things are, are going the right direction for you. What I can tell you for myself is, is I'm, a, I'm an advocate of listening before I speak and paying attention to what's going on around me. With COVID and all what 2020's brought to us, um, I looked at it from a different perspective. Uh, the major labels weren't releasing anything. Um, during the end of the year anyway, they typically don't release a whole lot or sign any artist towards the end of the year. And for me, I saw it as an opportunity. And with COVID especially, um, I have multiple uh, national radio campaigns going right now. And, and because of that, I was able to find, I felt like I found a niche there. I said, you know, no, nobody else is releasing anything. Nobody else is pushing. There's no one else that's delivering to the radio stations. There's no one else delivering fresh music at this time because they felt like they can't tour behind it. And if they can't tour behind it, they can't support it financially. I see it a little differently. I, um, I've played shows I, I, since I was a, a young, young, young guy. I, uh, I've played anywhere from 200 to 290 shows a year, um, which is I'm out working a whole lot of musicians just with that alone. But I also realize that if I put the same effort towards, uh, times like now and COVID and what's happening with that, that um, 
I may be able to gain a little more success or at least gain a little more momentum to moving forward and moving to the forefront of, of everything that's going on. And um, I'm, I'm sure you've also kind of seen the same success as everything's automated with, with radio, everything's automated with uh, uh, plays and ads and, and charting and everything. And I think that's where a lot of problems happen with the Grammys this year and a lot of complaints and every body that has made a complaint towards the way that radio has treated them, uh, uh, billboard charts have treated them and, and, you know, on and on and so forth. So. So with this latest project that you, is it out and is there a, a, a single out right now that's your pushing? Yes. So the single that was released what we did as an introduction i say we but it's not that i'm a uh, looney tunes <laughs> i'm just used to saying we because i've been doing it for so long uh i, I did all of it myself but i decided i was going to release the single and push it to radio and uh streaming formats as a single and a single only initially and the reason for that is because i wanted to be able to add it as an introduction to who I was as a solo artist um, and uh, be able to move forward with an EP after that. And the EP is supposed to be released um, through management and everybody else that's involved is supposed to be released in January. So give me your inspiration behind this single, why you wrote it and what was, or who was behind the inspiration? Again, another great question. I appreciate it, Casey. <laughs> so with, uh, man, what a tough question. I, uh, you know, this particular song that was the single I've been working on since I was in a band called Third Class Passenger. Um, Third Class Passenger had a bit of a success here and there, but that was back before even the MySpace days. So, which, you know, I'm showing my age a little bit, but uh, uh, I began working on it and I just never found the words to place behind it. And I remember once upon a time, even performing the song at a, uh, at a college event uh, at UNCW, uh, which is my hometown, Wilmington. And, and remember standing on stage feeling foolish because I forgot the words I had written for it at that point in time because I I didn't re I hadn't committed to the the lyric and uh, for me uh, it, I, I only until now have come up with the ways that I felt about the song and was able to portray that throughout the song and I think um, to really dig into it again goes to some of my past and. And uh, I try to write songs that uh, that the listener can take and, and make it their own. Um, I, not, not to make it vague, but to make it so that they can make it their own so that it can heal them and, and, and feel like somebody's there, the same as I expressed earlier, is, is music has been a, a healing thing for me and I believe it can be a healing thing for all parties involved um, to answer your question directly um, which I hesitate to do mine is to deal with uh, a failed uh, a failed relationship with my uh, with my father and somehow tied to that I was able to pull I uh, I uh, a substance abuse Thing into it um, by viewing his actions and, and viewing what it had done to someone um, directly affecting me. So that's that's the real answer if you want it. Okay, so my last question, um, a bit of a fun question. You can pretend you, you have a fairy godmother and she tells you, and I know you said you don't work with bands, but let's just say if you can work with anyone, collaborate with anyone, duet with anyone, and they can be dead or alive, doesn't matter. And your fairy godmother says, say the name. And when you say the name magically, you end up in a music studio working with them. Who would that be and why? 
Not even a question. I know the answer right away. Uh, Joey Kate from the band Lagwagon. Um, I grew up listening to Lagwagon. In fact, I've met Joey Kate as a handshake. And in fact, I was, I was so infatuated with his writing. And again, to the initial questions, um, the connection. I felt like there was someone else out there that made me feel alive again, that it made me feel like, uh, and, and Gladwagon's songs and Joey Cape's uh, uh, solo album, uh, and even Bad Astronaut, and uh, the, the, the acoustic album that he did with Tony Sly from No Use for a Name. Um, it's always resonated with me, and I, I can always seem to connect with with his words and um and understanding and it, it just it's i don't i can't express enough how much it stands out and i just it grabs me um which is one of the things that i just love about music period is i'm such a massive fan of music in general um I, i'm not one of these guys who hates a specific genre i uh I, I'm just, I always, I, somewhere along my life, I've, I learned the ability to just shut up and listen to the music and then let it, and then uh, figure out exactly what they were saying and why they were saying it. And the passion that goes behind that is what really drives me as an artist and uh, Joey Cape and Lagwagon and uh, uh, me first in the Gimme Gimmies and Bad Astronaut. Even today, I was listening to Bad Astronaut. It's just something about it. Just it, 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 uh, it grabs me, it moves me, and it makes me feel like somebody else is there and connects, and, and we're on the same page. Even though um, I don't, I'm not friends with him, don't know him personally. So you know, that's the that's the beautiful part about music. And and no matter who it is, whether it you know be DMX or whether it be Joey K, you know there's something about it that moves you and there's something about it that makes you want to continue to pursue uh, music as a whole and have fun, um, feel loved and feel inspired. Cool. Well, that Thank you so much for taking the time to watch another episode of Musical Interlude. I want to thank our guest, Davey Williamson, and you, the viewers, the audience. Thank you so much for always tuning in. I greatly appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe and to share if you have not already. And if you have, I want to thank you for doing so. Have yourself a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.